Hey friends, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and just by way of a brief history, at the end of August 2019, I underwent gastric bypass surgery, and in the first year to year and a half or so after surgery, I lost 120 pounds. I am now on a lifelong journey to find health, and what that means for me personally is continuing to nourish my body and learn about nutrition. It's becoming even more active in my lifestyle, and it is is about continuing to focus on my weight and getting it to a spot where I feel the healthiest. So in a recent video, I was talking about weight regain. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it up here, but I am just going to give a very brief overview. In that video, I was saying that in the last year to about year and a half, I have regained 20 of the pounds that I lost. And I can feel that in how my clothes fit. I can feel it in my overall endurance and stamina when I am being active or just going up the stairs. And I have let some of the good habits that I established after surgery sort of go to the wayside. So I want to regain focus and just sort of rein myself in because 20 pounds can very easily become 30, 40, 50 and beyond. And I do not want to go down that road again. So the other part that I was saying in that video is I find it difficult to just focus on I need to lose weight. If I just have that as this huge huge amorphous sort of goal it doesn't really inform me it doesn't really help me so what I prefer to do is focus on the behaviors because you establish those behaviors and patterns and then it feeds into weight loss. That's sort of the net result of those. So for me, what I was saying in my last video is talking about getting back on my vitamin regime, which is prescribed after gastric bypass surgery. I have gone out, replaced all of my expired vitamins, and I have started taking those again. I was also talking about increasing my water consumption, which I do find that I have been much more mindful about, especially at the office. I'm ensuring that I bring my cup down and leave it by the water container that we have, like the water jug with water cooler. There's the word. Wow. I really gapped on that one. I leave it there at the end of the day so that in the morning I see it as soon as I walk into our building, I fill it up and I take it upstairs to my office and then refill as I need throughout the day. I was also talking about meal prepping. We're going to get into that in just a few moments. And I was talking about becoming more active as well. And again, we're going to touch on that. So with that background out of the way, we're going to transport ourselves back in time to last week when I stepped on the scale for my official weight in beginning point. So I'm going to insert that clip here. We're going to ignore the state of my toenails. I do need to change the polish and that's fine. There are bigger issues in the world. All right. So here we go. All right. So it's a little bit more than the 215 that I had thought it was. Oh, I don't even know what that's doing. Oh, that's right. I have like an app that will like tell me body fat composition and all that kind of stuff as well. <laughs> See, it's been a while since I've been on my scale. At any rate, 217.8 is the starting point. It's just a number. It's just one measurement of progress for me. So I'm not going to panic about it. But now my goal is just slightly bigger than it was before. 22.8 pounds is my goal for getting myself back to where I feel comfortable. Now, weight is just one metric to use to determine success, but I find that before and after pictures or progress pictures are also incredibly helpful, as well as measurements, because sometimes that scale doesn't move, but the measurements do. So I did go ahead and take those as well. So that was a week ago, and for today's video, I'm not gonna do a weigh-in. So I did read through all of your comments on the last video. Thank you so much for all of your suggestions and all of your kind words. I really appreciate appreciate it. But what I think I'm going to do is every other week I will do weigh-ins, but I am going to try to commit myself to just doing weekly check-ins like this. Talk about sort of what I've been doing, what my plans are for the next week, what's been working, what hasn't been working, all of that kind of thing. So let's recap the last week then. My little boy turned five just a few days ago. So we did have a birthday party for him. And then we also did a family celebration on his actual birthday. So there's been a lot of cake, there's been a lot of pizza, and there's been some eating out at restaurants as well. So it hasn't been ideal to say the least. However, that's part of life and that's the beauty of 
living, I guess, and finding balance is that I don't feel guilty for having eaten pizza and for having eaten ice cream cake and going out to a restaurant and enjoying my meal, which incidentally I did bring half of it home, not by force, but because I listened to my body, I was full, packaged it up, and I had it yesterday for lunch. So it's all part of life, right? Like I don't want to not enjoy my son's birthday cake because I have calorie numbers in my head. I just sort of incorporated it all in and made up for it in other areas by meal prepping my breakfast that I wasn't ordering, you know, a muffin at Tim Hortons on the way into work and things of that sort. So I think really part of it all is just finding that balance and I don't want to focus so heavily on each individual piece of food that I eat. It's more so the big picture. If I am mostly eating healthier foods, then having the odd slice of cake, bit of ice cream, all that kind of stuff, like it doesn't, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. If I had told myself, nope, you're not allowed to eat cake, I would have been resentful of my own self for my own self-imposed rule that nobody is enforcing against me except myself. So why would I do that to myself? So at any rate, that has been where we're at with food. Now I did do a bit of a grocery order on, I believe it was, Monday? Yes, it was Monday of this week. I'm filming this on Friday. So about five days ago, I did go to the grocery store. And what I'm trying to do, and, and you might see that play out a little bit more here on this channel, but what I'm trying to do is big batch cooking on one weekend of the month, get a big grocery order, get our chicken, our ground beef, our bacon, or like all the meats and the more expensive items and really restock all of that. And then meal prep, do freezer meals, all that kind of stuff with those items. And then the remaining weeks just fill in what needs to be like the fresh produce, the milk, the bread, the eggs, the things that just haven't made it into the freezer but that we go through on a daily basis. So this grocery video that I'm going to share with you in just a moment is one of those like let's just fill in the gaps kind of deals. So let's cut to that. All right, real life grocery haul, dog, husband, mess, bigger mess. It is what it is. Anyways, we just did a, well, I just did a small-ish grocery haul here. Uh, this all came to about $97. The food prices are astronomical, but it is what it is. So let's walk you through it. I picked up a couple zucchini. I don't like zucchini, but I'm trying this thing where I'm an adult and put that aside. So we're going to give her a go. I bought one packet of Mr. Noodles, the chicken one. We have two vegetable ones in the cupboard. So I'm going to use the noodles and the little flavor packets and add some chicken, add some bean sprouts here, and then a pack of coleslaw and just make up like a stir fry. I'll probably cut these up really fine and add them as well. And some carrots, although I'm also planning on making a carrot loaf or carrot muffins. We shall see whatever is the lane of least resistance. So I just picked up some of those. I am sipping on my gigantic iced tea here. I get extra lemonade and then I get them to reduce the sugar in it because otherwise it would be way too sweet. That is beside the point. I picked up some yogurt drinks for the kids. My son goes through like a million of these. We've had to institute a rule where he's only allowed to have one a day. Otherwise he would drink all of them. I got some marshmallows for the kids. We have graham crackers in the cupboard and some chocolate chips. So I'm just going to use one of my little disposable aluminum trays and make a s'mores dip for them so that they can dip some graham crackers into that while we watch a movie later this afternoon. I picked up some tortillas and I've got refried beans as well as some salsa here. I'm going to make up some um, like enchiladas or whatever and put them in the freezer for later on. I got some mini rice cakes here for the kids. I'll just pre-portion them out and put them in their little snack drawer. Some tomatoes, bananas. This is for my husband. He loves coconut cream pie. Do you love coconut cream pie? We love it very much. <laughs> so got that. I'll leave that out to defrost for him. Picked up two jars of pickles here because our kids are pickle fiends. So I just go through and I will cut all of them up, like put them into quarters. We have a container in the fridge where I just, it'll hold two jars of pickles, just barely, but it'll hold them. And then the kids can just help themselves because our son will not eat them if they're not sliced. I don't know why, but he won't. So having them already pre-sliced just saves us like a million trips to the fridge throughout the week. And then I found these 
stoked oats. It said that they were local, so I don't know where exactly. Apparently, but they're like gluten-free and all sorts of crap. I don't know, but they have coffee in them as well. But they have eight grams of protein, only 180 calories, eight grams of fat, five grams of fiber, which is pretty good, and only one gram of sugar. So I figured I would give them a go, see how we make out with those. I'm not a huge oatmeal fan, but if it's got dark chocolate and coffee, like you really can't go wrong, right? So we're going to give, we're going to give her a go and see how it goes. Uh, I bought these for my daughter. She loves these. I like them as well. I just tend to just drink water when I'm at home, but she likes these ones. There's no sugar in them, no calories, anything like that. I'd rather have her drink that than pop. So I've got those for her. I've got some um, crescent rolls in the fridge, like the Pillsbury dough stuff. And we have some lunch meat. So I'm going to make some roll ups with these cheese slices. Then I picked up this better than bouillon stuff. Typically speaking, I don't really use a lot of chicken stock when I'm cooking stuff. I use bone broth because it has more protein, but I figured this would just be easy to have on hand to add to things like this, just to punch up the flavor a bit. What else did I get over here? I got one can of tuna. Again, this is me just pretending to be an adult. I'm not a huge tuna fan, although I don't, like, I don't mind it, but cut that up with some, or mix it up with some sliced up celery, which I already have in the fridge, add some vinegar, a little bit of mayo, and it's a good high protein, low fat meal. Living that bariatric life. I picked up just some tomato sauce. I've got pizza sauce already in the cupboard and I have two. I'll take you over to the other side of our mess here. We've got leftover birthday cake. It was my son, well, my son's birthday is tomorrow, the day that I'm filming, but he had his party this weekend. But I picked up, there's two in each packet. So I'm going to pre-make some pizzas for us, but I don't think I have enough pizza sauce and I could not find pizza sauce at this grocery store. So I figured I can just like mix it with the tomato sauce and nobody's going to know the difference. So that is fine. I picked up some peanut butter here, got some super sour gushers for the kids because they love those. And then just some plain old pancake mix for them. I typically use like protein pancake mix when I make them for myself, but the kids don't really like the texture and this is just easy to have on hand. All of that came to $97. I'm mystified. I mean, the cost of food is insane, but that is pretty much all we're going to need for this week. We have lots of milk, we've got lots of bread, and we've got still a ton of meals in the freezer already. I'm going to do a little bit of prepping for some easy breakfasts and lunches and we're good to go. I will say I am continuing to ride this like cooking at home deal hard. That is a big departure for me. I am typically like, let's just order in, let's go out. I get sucked into restaurant eating and it becomes a habit. And so I've really tried to break that habit. A, financially, it just doesn't make an awful lot of sense because we spend so much more, especially on like Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes. It just costs so much to have a meal brought in. You really are paying for the luxury of having your food come to you and going to a restaurant with tips involved, the costs of having drinks even, like a pop is three to four dollars depending on where you go. And it just, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense. So that's not to say I'm never going to order in. That's not to say that we're never going to go to a restaurant. We absolutely are, but maybe once a week as opposed to like five days a week. Right? So also the benefit to making my own food is that I know what goes into it. And I have said this before, I can add a little bit of like protein powder to things. I can add some fiber powder and just really boost up the nutrition in that way. And I have control over it. And also, frankly, I'm just enjoying it at this point. I put my headphones on, I listen to a podcast and I just like fall into the groove and I'm really enjoying it. I also just love that process of making something out of little bits and bobs and getting creative with it. So overall, when it comes to the food side of things, I feel like I'm doing okay. I feel like I'm doing well. I am eating more mindfully. Nighttime snacking is still an area where I need to improve, but rather than buying chips, I've been buying pretzels. I find that a little goes a long way with pretzels. I still get that like salty, crunchy satisfaction, but I can't eat an entire bag of pretzels. Like I can barely eat maybe even 10 of them. After a while, they just kind of get dry and it's, I like them, but like I'm tapped out at a certain amount and I'm good. I'm fully satisfied, but it takes a little to get me there. Whereas with chips, 
whole different situation. So rather than buying those, I've been buying pretzels. I'm continuing to buy like stalks of celery and chop them all up so that they're already ready to go. And Barry and I have been really enjoying that as a late night snack as well. So overall with the food side of things, I feel like I'm doing good. Now, activity. I've started running again. So I have one week of an eight week 5K training course under my belt and I'm feeling really excited about it. So excited, in fact, that I've registered for a 5K trail race that's gonna be held early on in July of this summer. So I think I've bit off more than I can chew, to be honest, but part of the excitement about that is the challenge involved because there's a whole bunch of factors going on here. First of all, I find trail running to be much harder than road running. There's like the ups and downs, it's a lot more technical. You gotta watch out for like roots and rocks and all that kind of stuff. And there's hills and up and down and it, you gotta be aware of what's going on. So it is far more challenging for me than running on an even surface on a sidewalk. So there's that. But also this particular race is being held at what we call the Blue Mountains up near Collingwood in Ontario, which is not that far from where I live. It's probably about a half hour, 45 minute drive from where I live. Blue Mountains, keep in mind, the first kilometer of this 5k race pretty much uphill. You're basically running up this mountain. You cover 700 feet of elevation in the first kilometer. So it's going to be a bit of an ass kicker if I'm being perfectly honest. Now, the only reason why I am not completely pooping my pants over that is because when I went to British Columbia in September of 2021, I did a hike which had 900, I think it was 900 feet of elevation over the same kind of distance. So it was even more steep. So if I was able to do that, and let me tell you, it wasn't pretty. There was a lot of huffing and puffing. There was a lot of stopping to catch my breath, but I did it. If I could do that, I can do 700. Maybe not at a run but that's okay. The website itself even says like only the fittest will run it. So I'm not trying to be a hero. It's a race, but really I'm just calling it a run because I'm not, I'm not racing. Like that's for me running. I don't compare myself to other people. I'm slow as hell. That's I'm slow as hell. I'm not interested in being the fastest runner out there. I just want to be consistent and I want to challenge myself. And this race is not about all the other people that are in there. It's about proving to myself that I can do it. And I just registered yesterday and then I kind of had a mild freak out because July 9th is not that far away. I keep thinking that we're at the beginning of April. It's the 21st today. We're almost done April. So I have 11 weeks from the day I registered to the day of the race, like 11 weeks and two days, 11 weeks. My training program is eight weeks. So I have seven weeks left before I'm running 5k, which then only gives me about four weeks to really like expand upon that and really secure my endurance. So I have to have a plan in place. So the app that I'm using is from Fitness 22. I paid for like the full access to the app. I think it was like $7 or something like that. I do have a 5K app from them, but I find that it's glitchy as hell. So I just use the 10K app, even though at this point, 10K is not really the goal for me. It might become so, but right now it's about 5K and, and this race coming up. Um, but the 10K I've never had a problem with. The 5K is glitchy and then it will get stuck on an interval and it won't progress to the next one, which either means it just never tells me to run or it never tells me to stop running. Neither one of those is ideal for what I'm trying to accomplish. So I just avoid that one, but I do use the 10K. The first eight weeks of the 10K is the exact same as the 5K. So there's no difference there for me. So that's the one I use. So I have 11 weeks until this race. So consistency is going to be key. And that means not skipping any of my runs. I run three days a week. So I try to take like at least one day off in between runs. My right knee really appreciates that. The left knee, it's a battle horse. It's ready to go, but my right knee is a little baby. It gets a little whiny and it gets a little angry, so I cater to it. But regardless, if I was running every single day, I'm going to injure myself and burn out way before the race, so I don't want to do that. So every other day I think is very sustainable, but that also means it doesn't matter what the weather is. If it's raining, I'm out running. Doesn't matter. I have waterproof shoes. I just bought a new rain jacket, which is waterproof, so I'm 
covered because when it comes to the actual race, I keep calling it a race. I don't view it as a race, as I said, but let's just call it a race. When it comes time for that, who knows what the weather's going to be. If it's raining, I want to know how to handle running in the rain. I want to know what socks work best for me, what pants work best for me, all that kind of stuff. And the only way to get there is to actually train in those elements. So rain or shine, I'm going to be out there. That's all there is to it. So consistency. And then I also want to focus on doing some additional workouts. So I've been YouTubing and Googling different um, running on hills kind of workouts and things of that sort. So things like calf lifts and there's a bunch of other stuff in there, core elements and all that kind of thing. So I'm really going to try to find some specific videos and work those in onto the off days just so that I have as much strength and as much, um, fitness, I guess, built up as possible going into this. And then we do have a park here that has very hilly areas. So I plan not right away, but at least throughout the month of June and heading up into that first week of July to head over there at least once or twice a week to run hills. That doesn't sound like a good time, but let me tell you, when it comes time for race day, I will appreciate the work that I've put in beforehand. So that's where we're at with that. I feel very motivated. I feel very excited about it. This has been the first time in quite a while that I have actually felt excited about stuff. So that is a very good sign and I'm just ready to tackle this challenge. And I'm happy to share my progress with you, the challenges that I'm gonna face, the frustrations, the doubt, because I know it's gonna creep in. In there but overall I'm very excited about this new adventure for myself so let's get it let me know in the comments down below what have you been working on this week what has been your high what has been your low that's something I love doing with my kids after school is just asking them the high and the low of the day so I think that's a great way to handle it for this channel as well what has been the best part of your week what's been the worst part and we can all support each other in that way so with all of that said I am going to wrap this video up today. Next week, I will do a weigh-in and check-in and all of that. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new and you're not subscribed, I ask that you consider doing so. But otherwise, I will see you in my next video. And until then, just remember, yes, you can. Bye for now.